Hey Cafe Crew, it's Colin Smith here, and today I've got something exciting. I'm going to unbox and do a review here on the new Canon 77D. So what I'm going to do is we're going to unbox, we're going to have a look, see what's in the box. Then I'm going to have a look at some of the different features, we're going to talk about what's new. Then I'm going to go out on the field and we're going to test the video and the photos. So without further ado, let's get started with the unboxing. So this is the 77D, just came out. Now this is a camera that's somewhere between the Rebel and the 80D. And let's crack open the box here right now and see what we've got. So here's a big hefty manual. I love that Canon does this in all the languages and this much actually is, is English. The rest of it is just different localized translations. Um, that's great, of course you can probably get that online and I don't know if anyone ever reads it. Registration card, all the bits and pieces. Let's get to the good stuff. All right, so if we have a look in here, you can see everything is wrapped in here. So we've got different parts there. Let's just pull them all out. Certainly not fancy packaging like you would get with the DJI products. And uh, that's it. I don't think there's anything else in there. Oh, that's it. All right, so that's the box. Let's see what we get. We get a Canon strap, of course, camera strap. Battery, very important. All right, so let's have a look. This is gonna be the lens. So why don't we just put that aside, we'll look at the camera first. This is gonna be the camera body. Nicely kind of wrapped up like that. It's a little kind of a cloth thing. Here it comes. All right. It's light, very, very light. Okay, so that's the body. can see here. This is going to be the battery charger. So it's pretty bare bones in here. Um, not a lot of extra things. It's the battery. Okay, so we've got a battery, we've got a charger, we've got a strap, and a lens. So I don't see any cables or anything like that, but this has Wi-Fi and Bluetooth built into it, so I guess they're assuming we don't need it. And here's the lens, very lightweight little lens. It's a very small one. It's a little bit smaller than the one on the 80D. Once again, this could be great for vlogging. Okay, so let's put this thing together. So let's flip it upside down, pop it open. I'm gonna put the battery in. Just pops into place. And then the card is gonna have an SD card in here which it doesn't come with one, so I'm gonna to have to go get a card. I've got plenty of cards, so that's not a big deal. Let's take this off the front. And here's the lens. So white to white, pop that in there, snap it into place. And there we go. So we've got this lens like that. And at it, there we go. So it's very lightweight. In fact, uh, I think it's under a pound for this camera. So if you look at it, let's pop it open here. Here's our screen. So the nice thing is we can flip that around. So that's really what I want for vlogging. So now I can see myself on the screen while I'm filming. That's going to be great. So this camera does 24 megapixel photographs. It can shoot in RAW and JPEG. It can also shoot a HD video up to 60 frames per second at 1920 by 1080. It can also shoot 30 and 24 frames per second. And of course it can shoot 720 and other resolutions. One of the things that's interesting about this though is with the touch screen on the back here, it has a new menu system. So if we turn it on to camera, it goes into the menu for camera. If we push it one more, it goes into the settings for video. Now if you look on camera, it's kind of nice because it's a touch screen here. So you can actually touch the different things that you want to look at. We have two options here. We can turn it on to photo mode, or we can go up to the video mode. And so when we're in photo mode, it gives us the settings. And you'll see this menu here is kind of interesting. So if I change the menus on here, you can see it's got these little tips that tell you what the different things do. So it's actually quite useful for people learning photography because you can actually learn um, from the camera here. Now these can be turned on and off from the menus, but we can also just hit the little Q and that will take us into our menus here. So we can also choose the menu options and you'll see when we click that menu button, 
there's our regular menus, you know, like you would normally see on the Canon. Or we just hit the little uh, menu to turn it off, and now we have the different ones here, which can be tapped on. We hit that little Q button, and we can also go in here and we can change things. See that? Just by uh, dragging around, so we can change the ASO there manually. And go back, you know, maybe we want to change our different settings. See that? And once again, there's a little tip there that tells you what it does. So, you know, we want to choose our image quality. Well, right now I'd like to be in raw, so you can just tap on raw. You see that? Uh, we can change our white balance. And once again, you know, we can do sunny. And it tells us for outdoor scenes under clear skies. You know, we've got a white fluorescent for indoors and a white fluorescent. Or we can use the auto. And you can see there's all the options there. So you can see it's very, very kind of handy for tapping on those. And then when we're shooting also in this uh, in this mode, we can just tap here and that will take us into live view. That's just the live view button right there. And if we want to focus on something, we can just simply tap on it. And notice that it will focus to where we tap. And it's a very, very fast autofocus, seems to work quite well. All right, let's move into video mode. So here we are in video mode now. We can hit our Q, brings up our menus and notices Good things here, like we can turn our stabilization on a little bit. Notice how it zooms in, and if we go to maximum, it zooms in even more. Um, I don't know if the maximum is going to be good. It might hurt the image quality. We'll test this one out, and we'll see how this uh, stabilization works. But we can see we can choose our settings here. Our autofocus, so this is the one with the face detection. And this will follow us around. We're going to test it out in the field in a second. And we can see, you know, there's our, um, see our queue there, where's our file sizes. So we can shoot 60 frames per second. And it even gives you the information here, like what's going to happen when we shoot it. So it has different uh, settings. White balance settings are right here. You know, everything that we need really for the video is right there just by tapping that queue. We've got our options. We can grab them right there. So I think this is going to be quite useful. Also, we've got, you know, a little switch here where we can choose some different settings and things like that, you know, shooting modes and whatnot. Uh, here's a little button here that'll turn on our Wi-Fi, so we can uh, do that, and also our Bluetooth. We can control it all from that little button right there. So as you can see, there's a lot of cool options there. Um, if we look at the top of the camera here, let's have a look. There's our settings and our different modes. Uh, of course, the joke is P for professional. Um, which is program, which just means everything's in automatic. And of course, and then there's manual settings there. So, you know, we've got a lot of those kind of options. Let's look in the lens here. We can see we've got a manual focus, auto focus. We can turn the stabilizer on or off. So I've kind of got it on now. It's kind of hard to tell because I'm just kind of doing this, but we'll shoot some stuff with stabilizer on and off. Okay, so let's pop these open. So in the front one here, You'll notice that we have room for a microphone. So we can put an external mic in there and also a remote. And if we want to do a wired remote, notice there's no headphone jack. That's the one thing that's missing. And if we go in the back here, we've got HDMI and USB. So those are the, the basic options there. And we'll see here, we've got a speaker there on the front is the microphone. Um, you know, we have a viewfinder, and I can see, just like regular, and one of the things it'll do is the screen on the back, see this little sensor on the top here sees when your eye is on here, and we'll turn off that screen, so see that? And that'll help preserve battery with that screen on the back automatically going on and off. And so we've got plenty of buttons here that give access to different types of settings and things like that, so we can kind of do that while we're shooting, we can move around. It has a pop-up flash. So this is a great camera if you're shooting uh, photographs and you want something that's a little bit step up from a digital rebel, something that's got a little bit more, a few more features and different things like that. This can actually help you. Maybe you're not ready to make the jump into, you know, the 5D or the more expensive cameras. Um, so for around about a thousand bucks, you can get a camera here that can take some pretty good shots and is good for an enthusiast. Uh, some of the other things it has different features on here, it also, you can do HDR, it has an intervalometer built into it, which means you can do time lapse inside the camera. In the video mode, it will actually do an automatic time lapse, where you can set it to take the photos and it'll automatically put it into a video for you. 
and also it has an HDR video mode which we're going to test in a little bit and see if that actually works. So how that works is it shoots at 60 frames per second but it's actually creating a 30 frames per second video and so every second frame on there is bracketed so it's doing the regular exposure and then it's underexposing every second frame to capture the detail in the highlights merges that back together again to create a video so um, that's kind of useful because a lot of the time when you're shooting video you'll notice you know to get your face properly exposed a lot of the time the background gets just blown out it gets too bright you lose the skies you can lose some different things like that so by doing HDR theoretically it's going to fix some of that we're going to test it and see how well it actually works so this also has the same autofocusing system as the ADD so Technically, it should be able to do a pretty good job of autofocusing as well as face detection. And so, you know, for a vlogging camera, this really makes a lot of sense because it's a very lightweight camera. It's a lighter than the ADD. It has a newer uh, image processor. It has the 7 processor, so technically it should be better in low light with very fast autofocus. It's got the flip-out screen. It's lightweight. It's got the different uh, video modes. All right, one of the things that seems quite interesting about this is the fact that it works on Wi-Fi and also on Bluetooth. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna to connect to my MacBook Pro, we're gonna have a look at the software and what we can do with this on Wi-Fi. So let's get it started. So the first thing we do is we just pop this open, we turn it on, and then we just click this Wi-Fi button in the back here. So what it does is it actually creates its own Wi-Fi network. So I can look at it, you can name it whatever you want. So I'm gonna go on my MacBook Pro here, and I'm going to connect to it. Okay, so I'm gonna connect on it there. Okay, so I connect on the Wi-Fi on here. I see the Canon on there as a Wi-Fi uh, network. I confirm it on here, so then that way it can make sure it works with the um, camera. The first time you'll do is you'll put a code in, an access code, so your neighbors can't actually tune in and see what you're looking at on your camera. That wouldn't be cool. All right, so there we go. We're on here, and we can download our images to the computer. We can do remote shooting, or we can do camera settings. So why don't we do the remote shooting? This is the thing that seems kind of interesting to me, is I'm gonna set up the camera, and I'm just gonna put it down right there. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna look at the settings. So why don't we go into here, we're gonna choose the live view shoot. And what that's gonna do is open up the screen, and now we can see what the camera sees. All right, awesome. So let's just move that forward a little bit, maybe. And we can just kind of point at that stuff. So there's some different things we can do. All right, so what we're going to do, first of all, we want to focus it. So notice we've got here, we've got all this kind of different stuff here. So we're going to turn the focusing on. And we're just going to click on there. And that's going to focus our camera. So there's other things we can do here. We can choose our white balance. So if I choose my little white balance tool here, I can just click OK. I'm going to do a custom white balance. Let's find an area that should be white. Tap on there. Boom. Fixes the white balance. And as you can see here, I can click that shutter button like that, boom, and it's going to take a photograph. We can change the settings and stuff in here, but I'm just going to reach over to the camera and I'm going to click that over into video mode. So now we're in video mode, and notice it carried through the white balance settings and the focus and everything like that. And we can even see on here, it is our audio levels even showing up there and all the different things that we need to do. So we can go in and we can change our settings. You know, if we want to go in there, like uh, make sure we put it into manual setting on the camera first. There we go. Now we're in manual setting. There we go. And notice we're shooting at 160 of a second, which is the right shutter speed that we want. But that's a pretty high uh, ISO. So we can just click here. Look at this. We can just play around. We can bring that down a little bit. Let's shoot an F4. And, you know, maybe we go a little bit higher in ISO. And you can see how we can adjust those settings right here in the software so you can get all that so one of the things I think is really good about this is if I'm gonna be filming myself I can point the camera at myself get myself in focus and everything like that get the proper exposure and then of course when you're ready to start recording you just hit the shutter button and that can start video so currently right now I'm doing the same thing with my 5d mark 3 using the cam ranger now one of the things the camera is a little bit better for is I actually use it on my iPad here and you can see it there. Using that there's no lag, it's pretty much real time. Using the uh, software here on the 77D there's a little bit of lag, but that's fine uh, for you know getting your settings and your focus and all that kind of stuff. That's fine. So you can do your remote shooting right here on the laptop. I kind of like that. 
So one of the great things about the 77D is its size and weight, which is the real reason that I chose this over the 80D. So let's have a look at it. If we actually compare it to, you know, right now I'm shooting on a 5D Mark III, so I can't compare it to that, but I can show you the Mark II, which is pretty much the same size as the Mark III. The Mark III is slightly bigger, but if you look at that footprint there compared to the 77D, look at that. It's like, you know, it's just like a little baby cannon. So it's a lot smaller. And let's talk about weight. I've got some scales here right now. We're gonna turn this on right now. I'm gonna take the camera and we're gonna put it on there. Right now, the camera with the battery and the kit lens here is one pound, 11 ounces. Let's take the lens off. Camera by itself, one pound, three ounces. That's with the battery. So that's really quite light. Very easy to kind of use that for, uh, you know, holding with one hand, because a lot of the time, you know, when you're vlogging, you're gonna be holding this in one hand. Okay, let's have a look at this weight here of the Canon 5D. This is the Mark II, a little bit lighter than the Mark III. We're looking at four pounds and two ounces. Okay, this is a heavy lens. So let's take that lens off. This is the 2470. It's a beautiful lens, but it's quite heavy. Okay, so the camera by itself, just the body, is two pounds exactly it's about two pounds and two ounces i believe for the mark three so we can see here this is like the camera itself is half the weight the lens is a lot less of course the other thing is you can put the l lenses on here so here's a little tip i'm going to give you so if you want to use the l lenses you can use these nice big lenses right here on this camera and of course it's going to weigh a lot more with the l lens on it that's three pounds six ounces because it's a it's a big lens so here's a little tip here if you're wanting to get into photography and um, maybe you don't have any gear or you're just starting to accumulate some gear this is a great way to go because if you don't have any bodies or lenses what you want to do is you want to maybe get a cheaper body like this is 900 bucks without uh, any lenses and then start accumulating some nice lenses here. So get a set of L lenses, you know, the lenses are a lot more expensive. They're a thousand, two thousand dollars each. Uh, but what you wanna do is start building up good glass. And then later on, you're gonna keep these lenses. I've had these lenses for multiple camera bodies. I'm gonna keep using those for years, but then you upgrade your body. You've already got your lenses, you know, maybe you buy the Mark IV or Mark V or whatever, and then boom, you've got a great system without breaking the bank in the beginning. Don't spend a lot of money on a good body and get cheap lenses. That's not the way to start. Get a cheaper body that has a lot of the features, get the lenses, upgrade the body later, and boom. That's the most cost-effective way of upgrading. So one of the reasons I really chose this over the ADD, because I already have a Mark III for doing photos and shooting uh, better quality video. I needed something for a vlogging camera, and if you don't know what that term means, it's like a run and gun camera. Basically a camera that you can grab and take with you. You don't have a set that's set up. You don't necessarily have proper lighting. Um, you don't have time to even set up tripods and stuff a lot of the time. Run and gun is just as you go, you're just uh, shooting. So the thing that makes this great is that it's lightweight, it's small, it has a great screen on it, so I can pop it out. I can see it from any angle. So, you know, also, you know, you can shoot up, going down. You can shoot down, looking up. You know, you got the screen there. You're not crawling on your belly. Um, the other thing that's great about it, too, is it's got the image stabilization built into the lens and in the body. So that makes it great. So another great thing about this kit here is with the 18 to 55 lens, it's actually a little bit smaller than the lens on the ADD. Uh, this one only starts at f4 which is fine for this kind of work it's good i'm not looking for you know shallow depth of field and trying to get like crazy bokeh effects or anything like that i want a lens that keeps a lot of stuff more or less in focus makes it easy for that kind of video work so um so it's a great setup so now we've got my friend natasha's actually on her way over right now so we're gonna head out of here when she gets here we're gonna head out and we're gonna go do a shoot and uh, see how this thing performs on the field. So I know it's been nice sitting here, breaking it down, showing you all the little bits and pieces, but let's get out there and see what it can do on the field. So what are we about to do right now? We're gonna go shoot things. Or you're gonna shoot me, actually. I'm not shooting today. So I'm gonna be shooting you yes. as Alice. Alice. And Alice Wonderland. And the reason we're doing this is because right now in California, it is super blue. We've got this incredible amount of green everywhere and flowers and stuff everywhere and normally it's brown. It's actually, it's like it's time to get brown again. Yeah, it's 
definitely is. Yeah, so we need to. what it used to be. So. We wanted to do the shoot like three, four weeks ago, and our schedules went right. wah, wah. So actually what happened is I was actually driving out here to go fly my drone, and I saw this hill and it just looked amazing, and I went out there, and I stopped, and I flew my drone and took some pictures, and I was like, man, this looks like Wonderland. And anyway, so I told Natasha, and she's like, well, you, the third person. <laughs> um, like, I've got an Alice outfit. And it's like, perfect, let's go do a shoot. So that's what we're gonna do today. Uh, but at the same time, we've got this camera. This is the 77D from Canon. It's brand new, so I'm gonna test it at the same time. I'm also gonna be shooting with my 5D Mark III. Um, it's gonna be my main camera, but we're doing all the behind Good the time. scene videos on this. And I'm gonna shoot a couple of pictures on the 77D, so you can compare it with the 5D and see how it looks. So I think it's gonna be fun. Button. Recording. All right, so now we're in HDR mode. We're trying it in HDR to see if it looks better in HDR mode. Stop looking at the camera, Colin. I'm not allowed to look at the camera. <laughs> okay, so we're pulling off over here. This is our okay. spot. I wish the screen oh. was on a Mark III. It's closed. I mean, obviously it's a no bit parking, two-way zone. Uh-oh, what's what? going on here? What, guys? Alright, so the goal here is to not get killed um, as we cross the road. There's a lot of traffic here. And uh, Natasha, of course, is paranoid about getting killed because she doesn't He's want to be. About kill He's gonna get killed, let's be honest. She doesn't want to be cut off in her youth. That's regular mode. All right, now we're doing HDR video. Let's see if that looks any different. doing regular video. Just kind of moving it around a little bit there. Let me, okay. Now we're doing up the image stabilization on. So the image stabilization is on the lens and also on the thing. I'm so glad we didn't get towed. For a I mean, second I thought we were. I am a photographer. Hi. It's true. I, am a I shoot people. It's like a confession. It's like a, I'm a photographer. You know what? I have a very violent job. I shoot people and I swap heads. <laughs> I don't swap heads. That's more <laughs> your side. Oh! Yep. I guess we're there. <laughs> okay. Good job, good job. That's a wrap everyone. Bye bye. Well, that was a lot of fun. Unfortunately though, the spot that we wanted to go to, we couldn't go because it was locked up for some reason. So we scouted around and found another spot where we did the shot. Now, if you want to see the uh, results of my Alice in Wonderland shoot, uh, just follow me on Instagram um, and Facebook at Photoshop Cafe and I'll post that when I get done processing the images. But for now, it was great. We got to try out the camera a little bit and this is it all kitted out here for vlogging. So what I've got here is uh, just a little DJI tripod that screws in the bottom. This is a Rode video mic. This is the shotgun mic we were kind of using and testing. So anyway, the screen looks really good. Um, I can see myself in there, which makes it a lot easier for me to record, but also just having that one touch 
So all the main controls you'll need for video is really good. The other thing I like is the lightweight. This thing is really light. Um, the stabilization seems to work quite well. Even the HDR video mode, I was actually kind of surprised. If you look at the clip there, you can see the power lines and even the mountains in the background were showing through. So uh, in future, I'll be using this as my main vlogging camera. I think it's really kind of well set up for that. So with the stabilization in body, in lens, easy touch control, the screen I can see, lightweight. Um, I think we're on to winner here. The other thing though that I noticed is the focusing is very, very quick. So you can see in there, you know, everything's on autofocus. You can see I'm pretty much in focus the whole time, which is one of the things I've seen from a lot of the vloggers. You know, when you see like the 60, the 70, and the 80D, sometimes the face is out of focus and it's focusing on the background. It doesn't necessarily always pull it. So it seems like the 77D is doing a really good job of that face detection and pulling that focus. So anyway, you know, we'll see the more I use it. Um, we'll see how it goes. So what about the things I don't like about it? Well, there's not too much you know because the price is actually good for the price point it's good it doesn't have the weather ceiling and stuff like that um, this is not a full frame it's a crop frame sensor which means that your wide angles are not going to be as wide as they would on a full frame such as a 5d or something like that the other thing is kind of just a little bit annoying is that the screen the pop-out screen here comes on the same side as the microphone jack. So when I pull this out, I can have the screen there and the cable's kind of a little bit in the way. Not really a big deal, but it would have been nice maybe if they put those controls on this side and you could pull that out so they don't really interfere with each other. Um, apart from that, you know, there wasn't really a lot of things I don't like about it. Uh, it seems to work quite well. This kit lens is really light. The camera's light does a great job. I think it's a great vlogging camera. So anyway, guys, I hope you liked this video. If you did, become part of the Cafe Crew and subscribe right now. Every single week I have a new tutorial on Photoshop, reviews on gadgets and different things like that. So anyway, uh, add a comment. Tell me what you think. What do you think about this camera? I'm happy to answer questions. Um, I don't know absolutely everything about it, but I'll answer what I do. Um, I've been shooting with this for a day now and uh, so far so good. So anyway, guys, Thanks for watching. Until next time, I'll see you at the cafe.